Hey guys, happy Wednesday morning to you. As you can see, I'm in a different environment. I'm at my home office, my spare bedroom slash office. And I just wanted to come to you today. And again, we know the order that's been changed on Friday and we're excited to hear churches, things are opening. But remember, again, we're working through a lot of things because it's not just as easy as being able to open the doors. We've got to make sure that everything is safe and compliant. So again, this Sunday, we're not making any announcements for when we're going to be open, but definitely this Sunday, we will not be. We'll still be online church at home and we'll just be excited about that. And that may be for the next while. We just got to be patient with that and trust God. We've been on meetings with the governor, conference calls with other faith-based leaders, other pastors and just different things. And we're just gathering all the information. We sat down as a lead team last night and talk through what's best case scenarios and solutions. So just trust us, know our heart. We want to be back more than you can imagine, but we've got to make sure everything's safe and done and 25% and occupancy and capacities and just different things. We've got to look at all of those things because they can be a challenge for our current location and what we need to do. But just stay patient with that. And today is our day of prayer and fasting and just really use this day again to lean into God and just really to believe we're, we're on the downside of all of this and thank God and we just got to keep praying that God would complete that work. I know the governor said today that he really believed or yesterday rather he really believed that the state of our state and the decline of the cases he really accredited to churches and pastors and prayer that prayer changes things and also thanked pastors for taking evasive action and just minimizing the spread by just doing what they've done in their churches. So we want to make sure that we're still just doing the right things. And again, please, let me remind you this, get in a group. We've added a May edition. That's why we've called it addition, not addition, because we've added a whole other month of small groups. And we want you to be a part of that. It's so important. I believe 113 of you have signed up right now, which is fantastic, but it should be 513 of you so get signing up today it's not too late to jump in still groups happening this week and at any time you can jump in because we're just discussing Sunday messages but let me just talk again about what we do each day we soak the word we look at the scripture the observation the application and the prayer and what we're going to be doing for the rest of this week the next four days is we're going to actually look at Psalms 121 I love this Psalm 121, reading from the NIV version, the first two verses, it says this, I lift up my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? The Message Bible says, does my strength, does my help come from the mountains? Verse two, my help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So here's the observation that we've got to understand. This, a psalm, a song, was actually written to describe the pilgrimage that people would make from neighboring countries and areas as they would come to Jerusalem to worship God. In order to get from where they were to where they needed to be, for many of them it meant going through lonely and, and harsh terrain. And this was a song of hope and protection and help that they would pray and ask God, God, when I go through these things, God, would you be with me? And then the promise that God has through all of this. And so think about that. We're all in a pilgrimage each and every day. Come on, we're facing diverse situations and circumstances. Who would have thought at the beginning of the year we would be facing something like COVID-19? That people are afraid to go to grocery stores, leave their houses and people uh, are not working and, and we see all the unrest that's happened. It's diverse situations. We're in a pilgrimage through life, circumstances and situations. But here's what we've got to hold on to. We've got to hold on to the assurance and hope that we see in God's word and in Psalms 121 that God will be our protection both day and night. And if we put our hope in anything lesser than God, we're going to be in trouble. Come on, we can put our hope in politicians. We can put our hope in our job. We can put our hope in the economy. All those things have kind of, wow, balanced down lately. We can put our hope in our health and in our confidence, in our strength. We can put our hope in others and friendships. But guess what? With all of those things, anything lesser than God has the capability to fail you, to disappoint you. 
It may be good for a moment, but it's not completely sustainable. But God is. And that's where we've got to place our hope. And I, and I just really believe through all of this, those things have been stripped away and taken away so we can see the shining light. The source in all of this is God and what he wants to do for our life. And again, I pray you've leaned into that through worship, prayer, the word, just spending time with God, filling that time for God, because we don't have to be in church to find God. We can find God wherever that we are at. So again, God re um, assures us in this psalm that I'm your source. It's not the mountains. It's not finding a place of refuge that we could get up above the struggles. It's me, God says, I'm your source. I'm your helper. And listen to this. He says, and if you want to really know who I am, I'm the one who made the heavens and the earth. That's a pretty good resume to make. That means he's a pretty capable God. He's capable of taking care of your life. So what's the application? Trust equals surrender. Again, we've got to trust God with our lives. We've got to surrender our lives to God to ask him for that help and strength. I've realized this. There's only room for one set of hands in the pot. So if I'm trying to work and trying to figure it all out, God's just like, okay, just let me know when you're ready. But if we take our hands out, then God can act in our help in our help, in, in our stead. And what does it say? He'll be our help, our help. It doesn't mean he'll do everything. If I'm going to help someone, that means I usually aid them. If I'm helping someone across the road or helping them with their groceries, I'm helping them lift that load. And God wants to help us, not do it for us. We've still got responsibilities and things that we need to do in our lives. So remember that. So let me pray for you today. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you, God, that you promised to help us. Our strength and our hope doesn't come in the things of this world, but it comes through you. You'll be our protection. You'll be our provision. You'll watch over us and keep us safe. And we thank you for that, God, right now. And we trust in you and we lean into you. And again, we pray, put your head, your protection all around us. Keep us safe. Keep all sickness and disease from us. And God, protect our homes and our families, our church, our community. And as we pray and fast today, leaning into you, God, I pray that you would hear our cry in a greater way. We love you. We praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Come and remember, be patient. We're working through all of these. We're going to keep you posted. When we know something, you're going to know something. But until then, come on, it's church at home. We've got daily devotion, small groups, lean into God. If you need anything, it's all on the screen. Let us know. We love you. Have an incredible day. God bless. Bye.